Hey guys, today we'll be seeing how to host a static website using CI/CD pipeline on an Amazon S3 bucket. So CI/CD stands for Continuous Integration and Continuous Development Cycle. So let's get right into it. In the first step, you will be making a GitHub repository containing your HTML pages and your CSS and your images. So I've just made a simple website using one HTML page and one JPG, one image, but you can add multiple pages and multiple images and CSS and it will still work. So now we'll be going to our management console and going to our S3 bucket. So now you will be seeing a familiar with a familiar S3 window. So now first we'll be creating a bucket. Let's name this bucket as static website hosting. And you can choose AWS region, whichever you want. We'll be going with the default North Virginia region. The next step is an important step. You will be clicking ACLs enabled. This step, don't forget to do this step. You will be clicking on ACL enable instead of ACL disabled. And then you'll be removing this block all public access and you will be acknowledging that this might result in the bucket and objects becoming public. So this step is necessary to make a uh, bucket public so that you know people can access your website and not you know paste some errors and then you'll be going to click on create bucket so it seems a bucket name already exists so we'll just say asc and now let's click on create bucket so as you can see bucket is successfully created so now you'll be doing a few steps you'll be opening this bucket and then you'll be going to property step and at the end of the property step there will be a part saying static website hosting and currently it's disabled we'll be enable it we will be enabling it to host a static website so here it specifies the home or the default document of our website so as you can see here it's index.html so for you, it may be app.html or something else, but for me, it's index.html and we'll be entering that. And then we'll be clicking on save changes. In the next step, we'll be assigning some bucket policies, which will make the objects in the bucket public. So we'll be talking that about, about it in the later stage, but for now, let's create uh, our policy for bucket so as you can see we are on the edit bucket policy we'll be going to create policy generator you can click this and you will be selecting s3 bucket policy select type and for principal you'll be entering a star and for actions it will be get object actions which will be the policy of our bucket so it gets the object so let's it's taking a while to find it. Yes, here it is. And Amazon resource name. So you'll be getting this from the edit bucket policy. Here it will be there. You can just copy it and paste it and click on add statement and click on generate. So this generates our uh, S3 bucket policy. And what it basically does is it's get the object, the, the bucket is assigning we will be assigning a policy that gets the object from our s3 bucket and from uh, here as you can see those and we'll be getting our objects from this uh, so just generated the policy we you can Paste it here. So this is the most important step. So in this step, what you will be doing is so what this slash and start basically does is that for currently in this state, 
you will be just assigning get objects to your Amazon resource name. But as soon as you do slash and star, this policy will be applied to all the objects that will be uploaded or in the bucket. So like this, this will be just applied to your bucket. But this by doing slash and star, the get object policy will be applied to all of the objects that will be uploaded in your S3 bucket. And then you can click on save changes. So if you don't do slash and star, what you will be doing is that the get object policy will not be applied to any objects that will be uploaded on your S3 bucket. As you can see, we have applied a bucket policy. So this, so the task for our S3 bucket is done. Now you will be going to code pipeline, which handles the continuous integration and continuous deployment part. Code pipeline is an AWS feature which handles the CI CD pipeline and auto and helps us automate it. So now we'll be kicking, uh, clicking on create pipeline. You have to enter a uh, pipeline name. So let's enter static uh, CI CD AFC pipeline and you will be clicking on next. Now you will be providing the source provider. So as you can see, we are uploaded on GitHub. So there are two versions available for GitHub. AWS is slowly moving away, uh, slowly moving away from GitHub version one. So we'll be going with GitHub version two, the most latest feature provided by AWS. So now in the next step, you'll be clicking on connect to GitHub. Here, as you can see, we are taken to a separate new window. Let's maximize it. So here you will be uh, giving it uh, a connection name. So let's go with test dynamic deployment. Uh, it will be static here. Test static deployment and click on connect to GitHub. So as you can see, I have already logged into my GitHub, but for you guys, it would be your GitHub uh, login page and then as you as you log in into github this page will come up it says authorize aws connector for github so this basically what it does it it's a link between your aws account and your github account so just you have to authorize it and again we are back to the connect github page so now for a future reference just click on install a new app and it will take you here, click on install. It will be applying to all repositories instead of some selected repositories. Click on all repositories so that you don't have to repeat this stuff again and again in whenever you're creating a new pipeline. So click on install. It takes some few time. And as you can see, this fields are automatically filled by AWS. Now you have to click on connect. As you can see here, connection is automatically well established by aws so the next time while you are uh, you know starting your ci cd pipeline your code pipeline so the next time you are creating a code pipeline you don't have to click on connect github you will be just clicking here and this field will automatically be filled by aws so here you have to enter your repository name for me, it's AWS test, and for branch name, it's main. And then we'll be leaving all the rest of the fields as default and clicking on next. We'll be skipping build stage because this is used in the industry and not by us because it's for testing and for testing your app, but we are not currently into testing, so we'll be skipping this stage. For provider, we have already made sure that our bucket is ready. So it's Amazon S3 for us. We have selected the region. You'll be clicking your, you will be entering your bucket name. So this step, you will be clicking extract file before deploy. Otherwise, uh, from GitHub, what we'll do it, that it will, you know, upload and or zip file to your 
AWS S3 bucket and then you will be you know removing that zip and extracting that zip and making sure the objects are there and stuff like that so instead of that we'll be just extracting it directly before deploying and now we'll be clicking on next so you can verify the stuff the pipeline name github version 2 this is our connection arn this is our id no build stage and we'll be extracting s3 and bucket name so let's create our pipeline it takes a few minutes to you know to create your pipeline the first step so it will it will take some time we'll be back as soon as it's done so as you can see here it says in progress and to run so it will take a few minutes and we'll be back once it's done As you can see here, our source it successfully ran and it's deployed successfully. So now we'll be going back to your S3 management console and we'll be going to your S3 website. And as you can see, these files they are already uploaded on our S3 bucket without my intervention. So now what you'll be going will be doing is will be going to our website that is created as you can see hello world and this is the image that we uploaded here so now let's see exactly how it works uh, as you can see let's make some changes to our index.html we can say instead of hello world hello asc shadow sir and we will be updated for CI CD and click on commit changes. So now, as you can see, it says here hello world. So let's refresh. It's still saying hello world. Give it a few seconds. So as you can see, it says hello ASC Charuset. And if we scroll back to the objects here, you can see that these files are automatically uploaded my current time so you'll be going back to our code pipeline and view how it was done as you can see it said succeeded just now so earlier it was two to three minutes before we made some changes but as you can see here it's saying upload succeeded just now so this was how a CICD pipeline works basically in source it connects your github report to aws then here in source then sends deployment cycle this is the continuous integration so it integrates your uh, github to your aws account and then it sends the deployments then it enables a deployment cycle where you get an object from s3 and you make it available to public and this is the result so this is how you host a static website using CICD pipeline. So thank you for watching.